I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Ashish Singhal, CEO and founder of CruxPay. Ashish, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today, and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, same here. Awesome. Well, if you could start off by giving a little bit of background on how you got into cryptocurrency and blockchain industry, and then how CruxPay is solving problems in the blockchain. So uh, one thing to note about me is that I'm a hacker and any hackathon that you can think of in India, I would have won it, including Sequoia Hack, Amazon Fusion, Google Code for India. And my introduction to blockchain or Bitcoin was due to the hack itself. And, you know, I was too fascinated after reading the Bitcoin blockchain paper and, you know, looking at how it can revolutionize not just the payment industry, but other industries as well. Uh, regarding data privacy, right? So I started building a couple of hacks on blockchain, uh, making it out to public, and uh, CoinSwitch came out of that hack itself, uh, which later the same company founded CruxPay. A little introduction on CruxPay. CruxPay is an open source protocol simplifying the way how people use crypto. It enables users to create human-readable IDs called Crux IDs which can be used to send and receive payment requests, connect to dApps with a single click while ensuring the experience matches that of an online fiat payment platforms like PayPal, Venmo, Apple Pay. And it all happens with 0% error because user doesn't go into the complexity of addresses and all those things, right? Uh, you can call it a naming service and a payment protocol rolled into one. Mm -hmm. That's great, Ashish. And thank you for the background. And now, Diving a little bit deeper into the product of CruxPay, how exactly does it work? I know that it makes it sound and look easier to be able to send money and maybe will allow people uh, that aren't as technical to start getting into cryptocurrency, but do they already need to have uh, a, and a Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet somewhere and then they tie it to that? Or how easy is it to, to get onto the system and, and start using it? So CruxPay is a B2B protocol. So any wallets that integrate Crux protocol doesn't require any uh, cryptocurrency to be with the user already. So it's free of cost to register a Crux ID mm -hmm. and all your addresses within that wallet automatically links to this Crux ID. Mm -hmm. The good thing, so you would call it a naming service at this point, but the important thing to note here is that uh, now you can communicate with other users using your Crux ID uh, in a P2P fashion. So you can mm -hmm. send payment requests, uh, receive payment requests, similar to how Venmo, PayPal, or Apple Pay works, yeah. right? So it removes the complexity of verifying addresses, uh, you know, sharing addresses mm -hmm. across different channels, uh, and, you know, because those can result in errors. With using Crux IDs, you can always be sure that whatever you're sharing to the other side is, uh, first of all, is end-to-end -end encrypted, and the data cannot be changed and the data what you send to other always remains the same. So it becomes very easy for users to interact with Crux IDs rather than different blockchains and different blockchain addresses. Mm -hmm. How a user get them involved in Crux IDs is by simply downloading the wallet that support Crux protocol. Uh, we are currently live with uh, Zell and Magnum wallet. Currently, we are partnering with all major wallets and I think by March, five more wallets are coming out, which users can then, you know, use to create Crux ID and be involved in the Crux yeah. protocol. That's great. And that makes sense. So if you have a, if you're sending funds to a Crux ID wallet that has a specific name, the wallet that you're sending from also has to be compatible. Is that right? Like if, for example, if somebody had a, a Trezor or a Ledger hardware wallet, would they be able to type in the name of a Crux ID and send it? So uh, Crux ID has two parts. One is the registration part where a user can create a Crux ID and link his addresses. The other is the resolve part. Resolve part can be used by anyone, even exchanges like Binance, uh, any, any application that you can think of on crypto can use the resolve part and send funds to you without any error, right? So without you sharing an explicit address with them, you just share your Crux ID, which is mm -hmm. human readable, say Ashish at exodus.crux, and then the other party can simply resolve the address and send funds to my uh, website. Okay, great. And part of the 
original ethos of, of cryptocurrency addresses, though they may be complex, was that they gave some level of privacy to the user because they're pseudonymous and there's no identity attached to them. Does that get taken away when Crux IDs get involved with cryptocurrency addresses? Exactly, because uh, so even if you look at today, right, addresses are public. Similar to that, Crux IDs would be public. It's just that they would be human readable. Mm -hmm. So nobody needs to know that Ashish at Exodus, who it belongs to, right? It mm -hmm. can still remain anonymous. Secondly, we have a very important feature in the Crux protocol regarding privacy is that if you want, only a certain set of users would be able to resolve your ID and see your addresses, okay. right? So you can decide that only Ashton should be able to look at what Ashish at Exodus uh, has the address for or contains, uh, you know, uh, what, how much money that it has on that address. Uh, so I can I can whitelist you and only you in the world can look at it. Mm. Nobody else in the world can uh, see what is happening with my ID. Okay, that's great. And does that work for Bitcoin or is that for like all addresses of all blockchains? So yeah, so, so the major problem that all the naming service had in the market when we launched Cruxpay is that they were very limited in terms of cryptocurrencies that they support. Cruxpay is an open protocol which supports any currency that your wallet has, mm -hmm. right? So it can okay. support thousands of cryptocurrencies. You can simply link any cryptocurrency on it and tr transact with these. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you mentioned that it's open source and decentralized. Could you elaborate on how, uh, what does that mean for users that when they're using it as a decentralized application? Sure. So uh, Cratchpay is the only naming service which is backed by the Bitcoin hash power. So how it works is that whenever you register a name, a transaction goes to the Bitcoin blockchain, which needs to get 12 confirmation to make sure that your name, your crux ID, which is say Ashish at Exodus, is always associated with a public address which is present in your wallet, right? Okay. And now on this ID, once the Bitcoin blockchain says that it, can, it is confirmed, you can link any data to this ID. Currently, that data is the addresses within the wallet. Later, it could be multiple more, more things coming as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is how we ensure that it is decentralized. The resolution that is happening is happening through Blockstack. So Blockstack built a very, uh, you know, very innovative tech in terms of name resolutions, where you can resolve, you can publish your name on a Bitcoin blockchain and resolve using Blockstack naming service. Right? Okay. We use Blockstack naming service to be able to tie up everything together and to make this registration seamless as well as decentralized. Mm -hmm. Very right. cool. So the important one point I want to mention is that there is no token involved. So while registering uh -huh. the name, it's free for user and they don't need to hold any token or any cryptocurrency for that matters. Yeah. And uh, the the registration, the fee happens through delegation, which okay. is done by the Crux protocol itself. So no user needs to understand or hold crypto before starting with Crux. Okay, great. And how does the business model work? Is it more for on the business to business side where you have a relationship with exchanges and services or is there a transaction fee, so to say, in a transaction from the user? Sure. So there is no fee to the user ever. Uh, so how this model works is it is a B2B uh, product where wallet integrate Crux protocol to allow users to create and resolve Crux IDs. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the services like exchanges, D apps can use these Crux IDs to allow users to connect with their wallets, to deduct payments uh, using a single click with their wallets. And these services uh, pay per, per use to the Crux protocol based on how much they use these Crux IDs to connect. And the revenue that we receive from this is shared between the wallet and the Crux protocol to build the ecosystem. So any wallet who gets involved and support Crux protocol would earn from the services using Crux protocol. Mm. For the okay. user, it will always be free. That's great. And what kind of partnerships uh, and service providers are already using the protocol? So currently we are not focusing on service providers because it's a chicken egg problem. So if you don't have a lot of people using Crux IDs, mm -hmm. it won't be beneficial for the services, right? So our current focus okay. is to have as many wallets as much on board 
to allow people to create crux IDs. And we have an internal target of about 100,000 crux IDs. Uh, once th we hit that target, we start approaching services as well to be able to resolve those IDs. That's great. And ideally, who are your ideal partnerships that you're looking to make? Is it through all the hardware wallets and desktop and mobile wallets? So uh, mostly desktop and uh, uh, mobile wallets because CruxPay is more utilized in day-to-day -day activities, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Say if you're playing uh, a game or CryptoKitty on, on mm -hmm. uh, your browser and want to link or pay them and uh, anything that have to do with transaction needs to happen through Crux protocol. So currently the focus is towards uh, mobile and desktop wallets, which people use not to just store funds, but to use those funds for various activities like trading uh, and you know uh, using the apps. Mm -hmm. That's great. And the product is live right now. And one thing that you mentioned about the product was that you have this uh, send and receive requests. Is that a unique feature? I've never heard of that before in cryptocurrency. Yes. So, uh, this is uh, called pull payments. So we are very familiar with pull payments in the digital ecosystem, right? So mm -hmm. you have used Venmo, I'm sure, hundreds of times where you se uh, send somebody a request, you know, uh, that you are requesting, say, $100 uh, mm -hmm. from them. And they don't need to know what your bank account number is and anything of that sort. They simply just uh, click on their Venmo app and the payment is done. Mm -hmm. Similar to that, we wanted to introduce that concept in cryptocurrency but in a decentralized way, right? Mm -hmm. So with Crux protocol, you can send me payment request. I can send you payment request. Say you're taking an Uber ride. At the end of the ride, Uber simply shows you a payment request in your wallet and you mm -hmm. simply do a single click to approve that payment. So this is the, the kind of experience that we are going with. Uh, so the whole uh, proposition of Crux Pay is about simplifying the user experience and getting on board the next billion users into the crypto world. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are focused on user experience because it's super important for adoption. Um, so that's very interesting. And that I'm curious about your future roadmap for product functions and features. Uh, what are you, besides building more partnerships, are you looking at developing more functions into the application as well? So we want to enable any transaction that happened in the crypto world. For that, I think the Lightning Network is the next uh, step for us to be able to allow night Lightning Network transactions to happen through Crux Protocol itself, mm -hmm. right? To be able to allow cheaper and faster transactions uh, and, you know, uh, scaling up to billions of transactions on this platform. Yeah. That's great. And are you looking for more partnerships, team members, or investors right now? So, uh, if we have uh, Sequoia Capital, which is one of the largest uh, capital investments, are, are backing uh, Cruxpay. So we are good from the investment point of view. Uh, but what we are looking at, obviously, is growing the team and more uh, protocol, uh, more wallets to integrate this protocol mm -hmm. into their system, right? Because uh, again, as I said, it's a chicken egg problem. If we don't have a lot of users creating Crux IDs, this ecosystem in itself cannot survive. So we need more partnerships in terms of wallets to be able to allow users to create Crux IDs. Definitely. And if there are people who are interested in getting involved with Crux Pay or learning more information or other partners, what's the best way for them to learn more information and reach out? Sure. So the best way is to visit cruxpay.com uh, where you will find all the information from the user perspective as well as business perspective on how you can get involved. Uh, it have our, the entire documentation uh, going, walking you through the problem statement and how we have solved it. Uh, so our solution in the industry is very unique, which doesn't require any token or any cryptocurrency for that matters and simplifies the way how people uh, you know, can register and be part of this ecosystem. So I think uh, visiting tracksplay.com is the best way to get all uh, the information that we need. Great. Well, I'll leave that link in the description box below. That's all the time that we have today, Ashish, but I really appreciate you coming on the show and I'm looking forward to following up in the near future. Thanks. Thanks, Esther.